All right, hello everyone. It's AKW Blaze ninety one, and I'd like to apologize that this video is uploaded very late than it should have been, and that was because for one of the pre for one of the Christmas presents that I wanted, there was an accident that we had. Where I got what I did get what I want, but it was the wrong version. I will explain about this situation it, during the course of the video when we get to it. But anyway, the, the present that I did want, the correct version, has arrived. Has arrived to, it has arrived today. So I'm finally ready to produce this... Um, Christmas presents video so let's go through my Christmas presents that I got this year and I hope you all enjoy it all right so here we go we are now at my bed here and what I'm going to be doing like usual is Shoving the pre and show me one bit of presents on the screen. Give them, give my thoughts and opinions on what I got, and then I'll talk about why um, this took so long. So either way, I didn't get entirely much. Which is fine, but I did get some games I wanted, and then I will explain what those are and what those are. So, first of all, some non-gaming stuff. I've got a new jumper, which, looks, which actually looks nice. Which actually looks nice. Can't wait to try it on. Like, I can't wait to try it on uh, after I've had a bath. So, looks nice. And then I got pajamas, but more specifically pajama bottoms. And no shirts to go with them? <sighs> Come on, kind of pointless if you ask me. Come on, I couldn't mind some, 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 some pajama shirts to go with them. What the hell? And then I also got some new pair of slippers, and yeah, why not? My old ones are rotting anyway. So that's good. So that's the base. So that's the basics. That's the basic stuff out of the way. So that's just the non-gaming stuff out of the way. So now we got some real good good shit to talk about. Mm -hmm. So what should we talk about? Oh, I'll talk about this one that I got right here. First of all, I got myself a new controller and a very special controller. It is the Hori Pad FPS controller. FPS Plus controller. For the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. And I say this controller is special because this is one of those officially licensed products from Sony. Like, there you go. It's an officially, it's a third party controller officially licensed by from Sony. Yep, yeah, an official licensed product. And here's also a thing as well, if you can't already tell by this. It's a Japanese controller. Yep, this is one of those Japan only things. It only it's only it's only ever came out in Japan. That you wouldn't find this in any retail game store. We found this on Amazon I found this on Amazon and and got it. 
It, lo it looks really sick and <laughs> sick. So yeah, it's got, it's typically like what some of those other third party controllers I picked up. Where it's got the Xbox 360, the Xbox um, controller layout and, des and design. Buttons and config, configs, stuff. It looks really good. It looks really, really good. So, yeah, that's pretty neat, ain't it? So, yeah, and it's designed to be compatible with the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 3 game consoles. But I wonder, would, would this work on the PlayStation TV? It should be interesting to try it and try it out with. Alright, so I'm going to open this with little... F with little... Uh, with little... Ease, with little tiny thumbnails. Because of course it's got to have some of these, um, these damn... It's got to have these damn... Sticker and stickers that you can't open unless you had some good fat good good nails So I'll, I'll, I'll skip to when I open it All right jump cut I've got the stickers off I can now open the lid And see what looks underneath it all Ooh, Wow there it is. Alright, so inside this box here is Uh, that's a cowboy. And then you also got instructions, which I assume all of it is Japanese, but possibly English language. Mm hmm. Yep. Description, yeah, whatever. More bit. Here we go. Now here's the controller itself. And wow, this looks like this actually looks more comfortable than I thought it'd be. And there it is, there's the sticker. Just giving you a bit of a little slight instructions in Japanese. But here it is, here's the controller itself. It's got the usual L L2, R2 setups. And wow, the R2 trick, R2 button actually looks impressive. Like, I actually really like the feel of the R2 button. And the same's gonna be done for the, R the L2. Yep, the analog stick is pretty nice. D-pad feels good. It's got a nice touchpad as well. Share options. Buttons do look. Buttons do feel nice. Good. And now, and, and now we got the turbo. And the assign button. Assign is it allows you to swap the buttons around to where you would want it. I think. At least that's what it says. I'll have a look at what it says. I'll just have a read of it while you look at the 
control that. Alright, so careful I'm saying stuff out loud. Is there an English language? Nope, there isn't. It's all in Japanese. Oh well. So I'm just we're just gonna have to figure out all, all the instructions written in here, all in Japanese. Right here. Yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm assuming anyway. But either way, it all connects through USB that you plug into either the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, whatever. And of course there's the turbo button where if you wanna make put put your actions in rapid fire, that's and that's a good opportunity. So, so it'll work fine. But then of course we got the switch. There. And then you got the 4 and 3. Which I'm assuming you're either using it on the PlayStation 4 or the PlayStation 3. I will be testing it with the PlayStation TV to see if the PlayStation TV will pick this controller, will actually work with this controller app. Right, uh, so anyway, let's look. All right, so let's undangle this. There we go, and there you go, and it's actually a pretty long wire. Let's have a look. Wow. I mean, it's actually a pretty long wire. Very long. Alright, that's, alright, that's good. Oh well. So, that's a pretty satisfying controller. But, I'm not done. I've got something that will work, that'll go well with this. I have some new thumb grips. The FPS Freak CQC X Thumb Grips from Control Freak. These thumb grips look pretty neat, neat don't they? I've been wanting to find some pretty solid, small, but effective thumb, thumb grips for my, for my game console. And just feeling this. It's act, it actually feels pretty, pretty neat. So yeah, and there's the back of it. You can plug this to either your PlayStation 4 or your PlayStation 5. If you have a PS5 handset. So, let's open her up. Let us open the bastard. Alright, and here it is in, in full. Yep, it says, ah, and let's have a look at the reading instruction thing on the back. Our performance thumb, st thumb stick is advanced. It's the advanced thumb grip that uses the science and ergonomics to improve gameplay by increasing your range of motion, comfort, and control while gaming. 
CQC EX performance from Styx were designed for optimal control in close quarters combat. The, do the domed and dimmed service provides an in a consistent grip for when you need it most. And have a look. And then there's the controllers it can be used for. And these are the ranges of sticks it can be used for. And this one is a mid-rise one. So let's open her up. Hold up. And here it is. You get two thumbsticks when you open her up. And you feel this, and then you put your, th your thumb on it, and my wow, it feels really good. It feels really comfortable. Yeah, like it feels really good. Now you can't see this pretty well through the quality, but yeah, here's a closer look at the thumb grips. Alright, let's move all this to the side. And now let's try putting these thumb steps onto my new controller. It does take a bit of a while to get it on. Oh wow, it actually slips on. Oh, that's even better. I still can't wait to put this controller on. And that's, there you go. Oh yeah, that feels so good. Can't, can't really wait to get started playing this. Feels good, feels good in hand. But wait until we get, and wait until I do our first gameplay session clip, showcasing some actual gameplay with it. Alright. So that is the Hori Pad FPS controller for the PlayStation 4. I will have a separate video up to showcase the device in action. But we want to see my print. We want to see the other prezies first. So I'll put this to the side. Yeah, so you can, so we can be left still because we got other things to open. We got some games, and I'm gonna start off with one for the Nintendo DS, and it is Cal Bella's Dangerous Hunts 2011, the Nintendo DS version. Cal Bella's the hunting simulator franchise of games that deals with first person hunting games where you're hunting dangerous animals of the hunting variety 
and this is the 2011 Calbella game which launched for the Nintendo Wii, the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 and there was also a Nintendo DS version which never saw a release here in the United Kingdom whilst the other versions did and this which makes this the Nintendo DS version pretty rare actually and we actually managed to get my hands on this Nintendo DS port pretty well Like this Nintendo DS port is actually pretty faithful. But it does a few things differently considering um well it's on the Nintendo DS, so you can't really expect um console quality. So it looks pretty decent. So here it is, this is the back of the game. Dangerous turns deadly. So pretty yeah, pretty well. I'll actually look forward to well, actually popping this in onto my 2DS later. I've started hunting down all the remaining um, Nintendo DS first person shooters that are on the console. Because you know I love the DS for its but how well they implemented the Nintendo DS's stylus really makes first person shooters a rival to the mouse on the DS, a rival to the mouse and keyboard setup on the PC. Ugh, this packaging! This bloody packaging! As usual, this bloody fucking packaging! <clears throat> And how easy it is to um, slip off. <clears throat> Let's see. Hang on, I might have to do this with one hand again. I might have to do this. Oh, hang on. Getting somewhere. There we go. There we go. There's the game. Elbella's Dangerous Hunts 2011 for the Nintendo DS. Yeah, but it's got the instructions. Warranty, a little, and a little recycle sign here. <laughs> That's a bit of a rarity to uh, see a recycled symbol on, my, on a Nintendo DS box. And again, this is the United, this is the American box for the DS games, and they because the American boxes are brown, and the European boxes are see-through. If you haven't seen a DS box, I will pop one for you. Here we go. I'll just take one on the top of my pile, Golden Eye Rogue Agent. Here's my PAL version box. And here's a United States for game box in comparison. So, there you go. Just before I bring it up. Here we go. <sighs> so, there's the instructions, there's the game. And, yep, that's the game. So, 
That's that's wicked. That's brilliant. So I'm gonna be looking forward to playing some dangerous hunts. I've never played any of the Calbell games before, so this will be an interesting one to play through. Again, this is a rare um, Nintendo DS game, and if you're able to find it, I keep an I keep it. It's a pretty, it's a good one to hunt down. And now. We're going to be talking about the PlayStation 4 games I also got for Christmas. And the first of two that I got is... Neptunia Sisters vs Sisters. Another game in the Hyper Dimension Neptunia series. And I got the PlayStation 4 version of the game. Yep, this is yet another spin-off of the Neptunia games. Because Neptune's been in the um, spin-off Purgatory for quite a long while, and it's been a while, and it's been, and it has been since um, Mega Dimension Neptune V2. Is that the game is called? Released in 2015 or 2016? Um, that the that that game's been out for. That we haven't had a mainline Neptunia game. But a high digress. But either way, here it is. Here it is on PlayStation 4 for you. There's also a PlayStation 5 version, and there's also a Nintendo Switch version. And sooner, and coming soon, it's also going to be on the Xbox One, making this the first Neptunia game that's that's multi-platform. So congratulations, Neptunia. So that's a big one. So yeah, here's the game showing um, Neptunia in in HDD form. I've always wanted to pick up the all the other Neptunia games. This one, alongside the um, Sengor Kagora crossover one, and. Producing perfection on the Vita are the ones I'm missing. So, yeah, that's good. So that's it, that is the front of the game, the side. That's actually, that's actually a very good logo, I'll have, to, I'll have to say. When game industry is on the brink of destruction... When game industry is on the brink of destruction... Nepgear and the candidates must band together and restore order. Yep, this is one that follows the um, CPU candidates, who are the um, the CPUs who are who personify the handheld consoles. And I can, and I and I'm gonna say this: I say that the CPU candidates are more. CPU game console personification material than the main goddesses. Because look at it. Uni's dress looks like definitely looks more akin to the design of the PlayStation Portable. And ROM and RAM, they definitely have the design looks of the Nintendo DS. And plus and it makes sense that there's two that there's two of them, that there's two girls instead of just one. And whilst I'm still hoping that maybe one day we'll see a CPU based on the on the original Game Boy consoles. <sighs> Ram and Ram will still do, do will still do do just fine. And the moment I looked at this game, this game gave me some Tail series vibes. Like the combat system almost reminded me a bit of the battle system from Tales of Bazeria, kind of. They're using a um, ability. They use attacks, doing flashy attacks, and they use one attack. And then they move on to another attack. That's assigned to either one of four buttons or something. 
and using the required um, CC in order to use them. Yeah, like it reminds me of that. It reminds me a lot of the Tales games. And they must have played um, one of the Tales games by now. And I'm hoping to God we do. I do see a, a Tales series Persona 5 character in a Neptunia game. Like that would be something. Instead we got Alice who who is personification of the Toho Toho franchise. Yeah. And as for the addition of the game I went in with, I've chosen to go for the um the standard. There was the um, the calendar edition, but the calendar they would provide you is a 2023 calendar, which at this time of the year it's kind of, it would be kind of pointless. So, eh, just get the game itself. And then there was a deluxe edition where it's the only one one that will get to get if you want the swimsuits, you know, if you want that kind of thing. But half the swimsuits suck in this game anyway. The vast majority of swimsuits are terrible anyway. Aside from ROMs, which I actually kind of like. I actually like, really like Swan ROMs um, swimsuit design. Yeah, ROM is better. And I really like ROM anyway, so... So, I don't give two fucks for the others. So, there's the game. And it's in one, and it's in one, and it is one of these games that has a reversible cover. But first, before we see that, let's see. Yep, yeah, all the minimal shit, all the minimal shit that's there. There's the disc. And then there's the other side of the cover. Where you see the candidates in winter in winter clothing. Yep, having um, some winter time together. And Ram and Ram there looking like Neko's. Cat girls. Yep. So. So, there you go. Neptunia Sisters vs Sisters and I got the standard edition because I just wanted the game itself to play and I don't give two fucks about the swimsuits because, uh, because the vast majority of them are terrible. So another game in the Neptunia series to my collection. I'll look forward to playing that a bit later on. And now lastly, the last present of them all, and this is one of the reasons why I delayed this video so late. It was a game I wanted, it was a game that I always would ask for every single year. Because it's the, you know, easy to pick multiple, it's the easy to pick game, it's the game we all pick every single year. And, yep. Yeah, and I even, and even though I know that this is a very, very terrible entry into the series, and for the 20 year anniversary, this should have done better. And it is... Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 2023 Reboot. This is the third game of the Modern Warfare Reboot Trilogy, where it tells an all, where it tells a similar storyline but from a new perspective. Like it has Captain Price, Silk McTavish, the fa all the favorite fan favorite characters from the Modern Warfare universe, along going up against Makarov and his and his army. And I've heard many, many, many bad things about this. And the first sign of trouble, it was from, can we find it? I 
See? Right there. Right there. Sledgehammer. This is a game from Sledgehammer. Not Infinity Ward. Infinity Ward was the guys who worked on the first two. On the, all the other Modern Warfare games. And granted, Sledgehammer was also responsible for the 2011 Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 3. But the problem was, the Modern Warfare 3, back in 2011, was actually really, really good. And this one is just fucking terrible. And that's because of, like, how rushed it looked. And the fact that it recycled um, environments from Warzone. Oh, it was, it was just an acid flare. It was, it was embarrassing for the series. I've heard so many bad things about it, but hey, I pick it up every single year, so I didn't give two fucks. <laughs> yeah, because that's me. I know everybody is like passed on from this, and I don't blame the vast majority of people that looked at this, played it, embarrassingly saw how bad it was, and just immediately turned it off. Yeah, trust me, I would have done the same thing as well. And, alright, now as for the reason why this took, this, this was delayed. I got this game. I got this as the right game. But I ended up getting the PlayStation 5 version by accident. Even though I do not have a PlayStation 5. I don't have a PlayStation 5. I do want to get my hands on a PlayStation 5, but I haven't got got it yet. I am going to think about asking for it next year, next year, but I need to invest the time playing other PlayStation 4 games before I upgrade to the PlayStation 5. So it will take some time before I eventually invest in the PlayStation 5. And one of those reasons is going to be the some of the Final Fantasy games that are on the PlayStation 4. Some of the RPGs that I haven't finished. Um, oh yeah, there's Tales of Arise, which I've started. The Tales of Arise DLC, Beyond the Dawn. I want to finish that one. Um, then there's a couple of other games that... I have on PlayStation 4 that I may have started, but I have yet to sit through them and finish them before moving on to the PlayStation 5. Because if I get a PS5 and start playing some of these PlayStation 4 games on here on the PS5, they'll upgrade, they'll upgrade and switch over to the PlayStation 5 versions instead, not the PS4 versions. So yeah, I kind of want to stick with the PS4 a little bit longer, just so I can get uh, just a couple more PS4 games done. Yeah. So anyway, this is a good. Anyway, this is um an easy pickup to choose for the Christmas holiday. And even though I know, I know I agree it's bad, yeah, still. I even heard, like, that it has the zombies mode, which for a Call of Duty Modern Warfare game, that's kind of out of place with the game setting. It's like, why would you want to include zombies in a Modern Warfare game? Like, that is baffling. And then I heard, like, also, um... Maps were ex... Players found... Players online found, um... Exploits. That would be used to cheat in the multiplayer of, of this game as well. And, and I think the developers decided, you know what, we'll just take them down. We'll just take these maps down so that players won't cheat. 
So yeah, this is the game. Let's see. Ah, it's the code. Yep, and Warzone, yep. All that, all that, all that stuff. Yeah, I didn't want to show it because I didn't want to risk um, people seeing it and writing the code down to steal it. <sighs> so, mm, bit of a shame really that that's the Call of Duty game. That flopped. And it flopped so much though that people started accidentally throwing hate on the um, 2011 version on Metacritic. You know, the Modern Warfare 3 that's actually good. Like, not as brilliant as Modern Warfare 2, the 2009 one. I'm talking about, oh, it's the the Bomb Warfare 3 2011 that was actually good. So, hey, yeah, either way, that's Mod Call of Duty Bomb Warfare 3, the 2023 edition. So, there you go. There's, a, there's my little, little selection of presents. Good amount of presents I picked up. Some good games. One good game for the DS. One good game for the PS4. A bad game for the PS4. But I didn't want it anyway. A brand spanking new controller with some thumb grips, which I think these are the most comfortable I've ever I've ever experienced. And also some nice slippers. Some nice slippers. I'm gonna try them on. Put them on and possibly throw my other ones away and finally also pop in the jumper and some stupid um, pajama bottoms which I think was just pointless to have but either way this is a good selection of prezzies I got now to try and now I'm going and I am going to try out these um, games presents and give my first thoughts on them. But and I'll end up with I'll end this video by giving me some thoughts on and giving me some sincere apologies to everyone. So I apologize again. This took long because I really wanted to delay this until I got the presents. That was arriving late, but it did arrive. And I got, I did get what I wanted. And I wanted to make this more of an unboxing video rather than show off the, um, <laughs> the controller in action like I'll put this as a separate video and hopefully hopefully you guys got some entertainment value out of this so even though it's a bit late I'm gonna say it anyway happy Christmas to everybody and at the end of the year you will see not only a video of me giving my first um, session with my new controller my new Hori FPS Plus controller but also you will see the games I bought and games I got for Christmas video well to discuss about what I bought throughout December and also give me give myself some New Year's my next New Year plans so I hope you all enjoyed this Christmas video it's a late Christmas video I hope you all enjoyed it and 
hope to see you all in the next video. So take care of yourselves and goodbye.